visitors in the house, to my friend, Brian Jenkins, to all my sisters and brothers that we greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. 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 Indeed, I am, I am happy, Pastor. Thank you for having me. If we have a language you speak, it's it's when when it, it's 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 uh, something you say to kings when you greet some someone in high position. You say Bayet. Well, I am bringing greetings from my family, from uh, my local church in South Africa, and. Bring greetings uh, from your cousins across the Atlantic who look exactly like you. <laughs> they, they love you and they always want to talk so much about America. But I trust that the Lord that one day you'll cross and come and visit us. Um, thank you, Brian, for the introduction and uh, I am honored just to be part of this great service today. Um, I, before we go into God's Word, I just want to say I'm thankful to God for what God does in our lives. I was raised, born, raised in South Africa, Pretoria. I knew no any other country when I grew up except where I was born, where I was raised. I grew up during the difficult days of apartheid, during the difficult days of segregation, I know, I've tasted, I know how it is to be a non-citizen in your own country. I know what it was to be pushed around, but thanks be to God, yes, sir. that's over. Yes, sir. South Africa is a free country. We celebrate that freedom that God has brought for us and we continue to look forward to see how God would indeed transform this wonderful country and make it a better place. Um, and I am so humbled that God indeed has uh, honored us in, in the way that God has done. I. I, I, I come from, from a, a background of the township. Um, township um, would be what you would call projects. That's where I was born. I, through the struggles of life, God has indeed uh, brought us to where we are. Amen. Amen. God has indeed brought us to where we are today. and. Uh, it's not because of anything that one has done, but it is by God's grace. Um, Brian mentioned the Baptist World Alliance. The Baptist World Alliance was established in 1905. Um, but for all those years to date, the World Alliance had never held its Congress, which is it's a big, the biggest gathering on African soil. And this is going to happen for the first time in South Africa in July this year. And we bless the Lord that um, the Baptists will gather in the land, in the continent of Africa, in the country. And, and I want to extend that invitation. I know that most people would want to have a valid reason, a reason beyond doubt to spend money fly across the Atlantic and come to Africa. And that's the reason I'm inviting you to the Congress. Yes, I invite you to the Congress. <laughs> Rev, I'm inviting you to the Congress. <laughs> Man, you can you bring the choir, please. <laughs> You know, as, as we prepare to receive the word, something about South Africa. Some of you I know that people have gone to West Africa and feel like, you, you know, yeah, West Africa, they, 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 it's, it's a beautiful place, but you need to go south. You need to go south, and, and when you come to South Africa, 
we, we will take you around. You'll see Cape Town, you'll see Robben Island, but don't leave the country until you can go and visit the animals. Not in the zoo, in their natural habitat, where they roam around free, where you need to stay in your car and they are the bosses of the road. So wonderful. And so I'm looking forward to you to sign up. If you're interested, you just go to, to, to the website of the Baptist World Alliance. If you Google it, Baptist World Alliance, to lead you to the website and you can register. And we still need more people to attend. And I'll be happy to have my people from Philly to come and be with me. Amen. Amen. I'll be happy to see members from Zion to come and be with us. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We got to go to God's word and pray with me. Uh, if there's one thing that we know it's always a challenge is to speak on behalf of the Almighty God. Amen. Because we don't speak for ourselves, but we speak for the one who created us. We discern his will as the Holy Spirit guides so that we can bring the word. If you have your Bible this morning, ask that you turn with me to the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 15. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, we're reading from verses 21 to 28. Leaving that place, I'm reading from the New International Version, the NIV. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him, Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Would you bow with me for a moment? Father, we thank you for your word for this moment. I pray submit myself lord under your will and your way holy spirit cover me lord i pray anoint me from within and god from you yes, speak your word as thou hast purposed yes. not god be my will but let your will be done O father anoint the ears and the hearts of those god who are going to hear your word May God be sowed into our hearts as a good seed that will grow and bear fruit. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord, and thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Um, as we are on this occasion to honor in dedicating a facility to the late deaconess Teresa Jemison. Um, um, 
Um, just listen to God and talk from the subject. A mother's heart. The heart of a mother. We all have hearts, but God gave mothers a special heart. And sometimes we as people, we change the things of God. We interpret them the way we think we are, or we know. We see feminine as a sign of weakness, and which is not, because mothers, you are created in the image of God. A motherly heart is not weakness, but it's what God has given you. We are created in the very same image as men, but God has given mothers a special heart. A heart that is needed in order for the world to live well. God said when he created people and created us, so in Genesis 1:27. So God created mankind in his own image. In his own image, God created them. He created them male and female. It is God's will that we have mothers. And with a quality of a heart of a mother, God cannot create weakness because our God is perfect. It is only the sinful nature that views things from a human perspective that could see weaknesses. And I want us to look at this woman. And I know even though I'll be speaking to the mothers, I pray that God would speak to all of us. Yes, sir. This story of a Canaanite woman depicts a heart of a mother. She had a daughter who was troubled by demons. Yeah. And she was a steadfast mother who could not be persuaded otherwise. Right. A mother who will stop at nothing to get help from her daughter. <coughs> the text says here, this woman was a Gentile. She comes from the region of Sidon and if Tar, which is outside the children of the covenant at the time. But this woman had a problem at home, uh -huh. as many women do have problems at home today. Because demon possession has not stopped in those days. Uh -huh. yes, Satan is still roaming the streets of our towns. Yes, he possesses people and brings them under subjection. Uh -huh. We were living in the days, I was talking to, to Brian the other time, when the restaurant and we look at young people, sometimes how they behave, and we, we label them a lost generation. Let me tell you, the devil is still roaming around. Mothers, be ready to do what God has intended you to do. Because God knows that you have something in you, or God has placed something in you that needs to put this nation back to where it has to be. This woman, this woman had two things that stood against her. First, she was a woman, indeed. And women were segregated, as sometimes they are even today. She had that one obstacle. And the second obstacle, she was a Gentile. But she had a problem at home. And even when she knew that she had challenges, that problem could not keep her in her house because she has this heart of a mother. 
when you have a heart of a mother, you can't sit and look at your problem and say, I will do nothing. She said, even though I am not a man, I am going to rise up. Even though I'm not a Jew, I'm going to stand up and go and seek help because my daughter is dying of a demon. Can somebody hear me today? You see, God has given her this godly heart. Mother's God has given you a godly heart. But today, let me talk about the deacon who has served this church with distinction. We need mothers who will take their position, who will not sit with the problem would not allow the problem to become bigger than their loving hearts. Mothers would not allow to be confined by the standard of this world or by the laws of this world. Mothers would say, I am a mother. Uh, when, when things were bad in South Africa, some of you know we had mothers like Winnie Mandela. Lillian Goy, who said, we're not going to let apartheid run down South Africa. We are going to rise up because we have this heart that does not allow us to stay at home and look at the problem and do nothing. Uh, Brian shared with me that D.K. Jameson had so many children. And I believe it's a heart of a mother that said, I will not pass by when a young boy is at the streets and being left motherless, left without a parent. I will extend my heart. I will open my heart. I will receive even those that I have not given birth to because I have a heart of a mother. This woman went into the territory of the Jews. She, she might have heard about Jesus. Uh -huh. She said, if that Jesus, who is in the land of the Jews, has power to resolve my problems, my heart will not allow me to sit, but I'm going to be carried by this love for my daughter. I will cross the borders. I will walk until I find this prophet. And indeed, she walked until she found the prophet. America, South Africa, Nigeria, Europe is in trouble because mothers are sitting back and watching. They're not prepared to cross the boundaries to go into unfamiliar territory because we have sick children in our homes. We have children possessed by demons. We need to rise up. Yes, sir. When she got up and finally found Jesus, her problem was not solved there and there. My Bible tells me she went to Jesus and cried, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible said, the Lord did not even give her a response. She was ignored, given a cold shoulder. But a heart of a woman cannot be stopped by a cold shoulder cannot be ignored because that heart is full of love. So much love that even when you are ignored, you will persist and be steadfast. She kept on crying. Why well, I'm saying that because the Bible said the disciples went to the Lord and said she kept on crying. She cannot stop. Mothers, we can't stop crying to God. We can't stop pleading to God when our country is in this mess. 
We can't stop coming on our knees, crying every morning, crying every evening, because our young men are in drugs. Our men have lost that respect of being men. We cannot stop crying. We cannot stop crying. And she went on and on. I'm trying to think, Pastor. Maybe she went to Peter and said, you look like you, you're the boss of this crew. Can you talk to Jesus? Peter said, leave me alone. And she went, she went to Thomas. Maybe Thomas says, I doubt if Jesus will help you because he's Mr. Doubt. And maybe he tried Matthew. Matthew was a test collector. Maybe Matthew asked, woman, how much do you have? You know, she was moving. She went to Judas. Judas said, we can talk about it behind the wall because Judas was crooked. But she kept on. We need to keep on. If our children are going to be right, if our homes are going to be right, we have to keep on. We are a generation that wants quick fix. We, we live in the days of instant coffee, fast food. You, we, we cannot persist. Gone are the days when we have to plant your garden, wait for your garden to grow. Gone are the days of putting your stove on. We don't have stove, we microwave everything. Yes. And we even microwave our faith. We even microwave our religion. We microwave the way we behave. We don't have patience. We cannot keep on. We cannot be steadfast. We meet one, one obstacle. We turn there. We meet one obstacle. We give up because we are a generation that's not learned to be steadfast and to be patient and to push on. Uh, uh, it's not only here, we, 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 we also getting there, we becoming a generation of micro ovens. We, 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 we heat up everything. You, you know when you have to cook, you have to wait some minutes for it to boil and cook. But heat up is only a few seconds. And if you, we live in this generation, if you want to know how impatient people are, you go to the traffic lights. <laughs> this generation cannot wait. Once it turns green, mister, you better go. Or you, they're going to blow their horn on you. They're going to blow their horn on you. They're going to blow. Because, but this woman teaches us to be persistent. She did not give up. But listen to the disciples. They say to Jesus, get rid of her. She's going to wear us down. And she heard that she did not go away. She did not give up. You see, things go wrong. Because when things go wrong, we tend to give up too quickly. We, we, we think, what can we do? Let me talk to Christians. There's something we have forgotten. Jesus says in Luke chapter 8, we ought to pray and not faint. We ought to pray and not give up. And he gives that parable about that wicked judge and that widow who came on asking for the judge to have justice. Uh, and, and, and just because the woman came on and on and the judge said, I don't fear God, I don't respect people, but this woman is going to wear me down. And just because it's well done, woman, we need believers who are going to bother God, who are going to cry to God, who are going to tell God, I'm not going to give up God until my son is off the door. I'm not going to give up until they straighten up. I'm not going to sit down and says, you know, we're living in the days when these things are happening. 
But I'm going to be like this woman. She did not even be persuaded. Otherwise, Amen. even when the disciples said, Lord, get rid of her. Uh -huh. But she continued yeah. to make a plea to the Lord. And the Lord finally responded. Uh -huh. But Jesus was not talking to her. was talking to the disciples. And said, guys, I have not come for these other people except for the lordship of Israel and this woman find a spot and said I'm going to come Lord even those who are not counted can find grace please can you help me and Jesus gave her the answer that could have driven some of us men Jesus said, it is not good to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. Uh, but this woman said, you are, true, you are right. True, Lord. But even little dogs do we eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. But, but, but this woman says, Yes, even so, I know that I have a problem bigger than my, my me. I cannot solve it. You, can, you are the only one who can solve this problem for me. But uh, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to, to picture a woman of today. Hearing Jesus says, it is not right to give the children's bread to the dogs. She could have tossed her head back. <laughs> Mister, do you call me a dog? <laughs> she could have twisted her neck. Do you know who I am? I'm trying to be nice to you. <laughs> you call me a dog. <laughs> I'm trying to talk nice to you, Jewish man. And you call me a dog. But this woman, knew that her problem was bigger than her ego. She said, I could have tossed my head back. I could have told Jesus, go away with your healing. But let me tell you, the daughter will remain possessed with a demon. Sometimes we try to maintain our ego and our problem persists. She, she could have answered and told Jesus off. But she was going to leave and face her daughter being demonized. She said, Lord, even though the language is rough, I accept that yes, you're speaking in parables. You're speaking idioms. And I accept that you have come for the Israelites. But help me I have a daughter who needs your help. And she says these words, a steadfast woman, even little dogs do feed from the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Ah, oh, she, she degraded herself in order to uplift her daughter. She did not care about how would people perceive her, but she was concerned to resolve the problem. The problem today, we are too much concerned about how people perceive us instead of solving our problem and bringing them to God. We want to hide them, pretend everything is all right. You know, mother, that all is not well. Why don't you bring it to God in prayer? Don't pretend well, don't try to put up makeup, don't try to dress up and try to sing hallelujah when you should be crying, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. I cannot pretend. I need your help. Jesus, look at her. Said, woman, you have a steadfast faith. 
You have a steadfast faith. She, God had daughter, healed. Eve, I would use those words. It is this woman's heart that delivered her daughter. Because of her love to her daughter, she wouldn't be turned back. She wouldn't be stopped by anything. She said, Lord, even dogs would pick up those crabs. Jesus looked at her and said, you are a great woman. I wish the women of this world were like you. You, you are a wonderful mother. I wish mothers of this world, young girls, could learn from this mother. Because you are a mother who is a home builder. You are a mother who is mother of the nation. You can build your home. And just I said, go in peace. Uh -huh. hey. Hey, hey. Go in peace. Your daughter is delivered. Yes. We can. With the mother's heart, we can deliver our nation. We can deliver our children. We just need to persist some more. We need to pray some more. We need to talk some more. We don't need to be persuaded otherwise. Uh, Jesus says, woman, you have healed your daughter. You have delivered your daughter. Your faith has brought healing to her life. Yes, it is not of anything else but your persistence. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. You know, to the children of Deacon Jameson, she persisted. I know there were days when she would have pillow was wet because of tears, because you wouldn't listen to her, but she never gave up on you. She persisted to love you, regardless of your crooked ways. Mothers, we have to love them, regardless of their crooked ways. We need to make women out of them. We need to make men out of them, because God has given you this loving heart. A prayer of a mother. She would pray, God help me to remain loving at all times. Yes, yes. To begin with my family. Let me not give up even when challenges are as high as a mountain. Ah, oh. uh, remind me that this is, this is what you created me for. To nurse the little ones, to feed the hungry, to love with a motherly heart. Because you, oh God, lives in me. This is your image. If I do not love as you have made me, if I do not care as you have designed me, then I shall be denying what you have put in me. This is a prayer of a mother who says, I am gonna stand up. I am gonna take my position. You will say this, I know there are challenges. I'm not ignoring us fathers. I'm coming our straight. You know, fathers, we have a role to play to make sure that mothers become real mothers. And they can only become real mothers if we're real fathers. If we stand by and become fathers who can take care, who can love, protect, then our mothers will do what they ought to do. We should never be a problem, but we should be a blessing to them. Oh, yes. Ah, uh, when we want to do this, you know, man, that's, uh, I'm about to take my seat. When you and I want to do this, we said, God, I want to love, I want to take care, I want to make, I want to make sure that I build this nation. Yet you find something every time pulling you down. You find something bringing down every time you try to go. But let me remind you that the Apostle Paul had the same challenge. He said, I find this law at work in you. Yes, Though I want to do good, evil is right there. 
In my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work, waging war against the good things I want to do. Oh, then he cries, what a wretched man I am, who will rescue me from this body of death. Thanks be to God, who deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Ah, he is able even today to deliver us when we come to him by faith, when we give our life to him. Let me tell you, as a natural person, without faith, there's nothing I can do. As a natural person, without Jesus, I am zero. There's nothing I can accomplish. It's only when I come to him by faith, because it is Jesus who can take out a wicked heart out of me and give me a good heart. It is Jesus who can take out a heart of stone and give me a heart of the Spirit. It is Jesus who can put his Holy Spirit in me. It is Jesus who can make me to become a good mother that I ought to be. It is Jesus who can make me a good father that I need to be. It is Jesus who can make me a good child that I ought to be, a good son that I ought to be, a good daughter that I ought to be. It is Jesus. Why Jesus? Why Jesus? And not any other. It is Jesus. Only Jesus. Because it is Him only who took our place, went onto the cross of Calvary. He did not sin, but He took our place of sinners. He became sin in our place. He went and took that cross. He allowed them to nail Him on that cross. He died on the cross the cross that brought condemnation upon me the apostle Paul says therefore there is now no more condemnation to them that are in Christ if you want to find yourself doing what God has intended you to do you need Jesus because he's going to remove the condemnation out of your heart you need Jesus because this Jesus lay on the tomb on your behalf on my behalf he was swallowed by death on our behalf in order for us to have a good heart heart full of love but I thank God death could not hold him too long because he is the only person who was condemned sinless Sunday morning. The stone was rolled away. My Jesus came out. And he said, Oh power, all authority in heaven, on earth, under the earth is given unto him. If you say, My heart is leading me astray. Operation on you, a good surgery on you. He can transplant an evil heart and give you a good heart. God bless you. Mothers, keep doing good. God has given you a good heart. Yeah.